to this our topic is temporal fossa with its boundaries fluid and applied importance this area is called temporal fossa so first we will see the boundaries of the temporal fossa this region is called frontal bone this area is called zygomatic bone so over anterior side we say this is zygomatic or temporal suture along with the zygomatic bone frontal bone and this is called a sphenoid bone so anteriorly this fossa is bounded by the this three bones if you see here this is the orbital cavity so here it is forms the posterior part of the lateral side of the orbital cavity the same part if you see the superior boundary it is formed by the temporal lines actually if you see the temporal lines there are two type of the temporal lines number one is the superior temporal line and number two is the that is the inferior temporal line if you see the superior temporal lines it is actually bounded ended at somewhere in between but the inferior temporal line starts with the root of zygomatic bone uh, part of the uh, frontal bone and it is continue and continue with the zygomatic arch so here the superior temporal lines and the gap in between these two lines gives attachment to the temporal fascia while the inferior temporal lines and the area below this covered with the temporal fascia gives attachment to temporalis muscle so here you can see this two temporal lines superiorly forms the superior boundary of the temporal fossa now we come to the inferior boundary as we see the other skull on the lateral aspect we immediately we see this is the zygomatic arch if we go still deeper to zygomatic arch here in between deeper to zygomatic arch we find the gap and deeper to that there is a body of sphenoid with bounded infratemporal crest of the sphenoid bone and then it continued the greater wing of sphenoid so here medially it bounded this deep deep part is formed by the infratemporal crest of the sphenoid bone and lower down there is infratemporal fossa so infratemporal fossa is connected with the temporal fossa through this gap so if we we see the boundary over here we can see that this is the part of the ramus this mandible so here it is a ramus of mandible if we see above this this is the on the lateral side there is a zygomatic arch so on lateral side there is a zygomatic arch on medial side if we see deep to this infratemporal so here it is a body of sphenoid and which continue with the greater wing of sphenoid so here this is the part or area forming the that is a here this area is forming the infratemporal fossa and this is the part of supratemporal temporal fossa so this area is connected by this gap now so this area is forming the temporal fossa so now we understand this part this and this is the inferior boundary here it is a superior temporal line the inferior temporal line forms the superior boundary and this area is the anterior boundary of the fossa now we come to the now we come to the floor of temporal fascia this area is forming the floor of temporal fossa the number one this is the frontal bone this is the temporal bone this is the parietal bone and sphenoid bone now here if we see this all four bones they are joined by each other through a one suture and this shape of that suture is the h shaped and this h shaped area is known as a terion that is known as a terion the importance of this terion is if we see the course of middle meningeal artery after coming out from this it will give you a frontal branch and parietal branch that is the anterior division so along the terion you find the branch of the middle meningeal artery along with that we will find also one vein that is a middle meningeal vein and along with that middle meningeal vein we also find a structure here a structure of the brain and that is we can see it is like here and that is the this so here this is the stem of lateral sulcus and that point is known as a sylvian point so sylvian point is also lying behind this so over this terion we find the two structure artery and vein and that is a middle meningeal artery 
and vein and the st third structure is the structure of the soft tissue brain and that is the lateral sulcus now the other importance behind of this sterion is it is a very thin bone as compared to other part of the skull this is very thin bone so even the smallest blow can injured over this area and second point whenever we want to do decompression over the decompression we can do it easily over this area thank you